So Braun Strowman's going to face the bar for the tag team titles by himself at WrestleMania. Huh? Burn it down! Welcome everyone to Monday Night Raw Review from Detroit, Michigan in the Little Caesars Arena. Where tonight, a lot of stuff happened. On tonight's show, you know, unlike Fastlane last night, you know, Raw actually had some highlight moments and like a lot of, a lot of, not just like two or three, no, more than that, more than that. So we're going to talk about that here in this review. Um, I, I'm just at a loss for words. First of all, I didn't know that the tag team battle royale was the main event. <laughs> so Titus O'Neil, <laughs> Apollo Crews, <laughs> you know, Slater and Rhino. They just made event at Monday Night Raw. There you go. All right, so I, I just, I'm trying to think. So Braun Strowman is going to WrestleMania by himself to face the bar for the tag team titles. We 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 doing this now. That's what we doing at WrestleMania. Okay, that's interesting. I'm intrigued as fuck. Let's see where it goes. Is he gonna? Uh, is WWE gonna do what I did for my WrestleMania, where I had Kane win a battle royale by himself for a number one contendership uh, opportunity at the tag team titles at WrestleMania? But uh, Kane had his partner come through at WrestleMania, aka the Undertaker, which was which led for the Brothers of Destruction to face the Revival at WrestleMania for the tag titles. So there's a little history there if you're interested in watching some uterus mode, you know. It should be in this video. I digress. Um, so uh, that that is some interesting stuff, and I can't wait. So let's 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 get into this stuff. All right, let, let, let's get, let's get into raw review. So we start the show off. Kurt Angle comes out, and he's saying he's honored to be teaming up with Ronda Rousey to take on the Gamer and Stephanie McMahon. At WrestleMania, he said that he's almost sorry for what Ronda's going to do for Stephanie McMahon. Hell no, I ain't sorry. I want Ronda Rousey to dismember Stephanie McMahon. I want Ronda Rousey to disfigure Stephanie McMahon to where she has to go get reconstructive surgery. That's how bad I want to see Ronda. I'm not going to get into this, okay? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. And then Kurt Angle said he's not going to be sorry when he beats up the game Triple H uh, at WrestleMania. So, and then he brings up Roman and Brock. You know that match is a match of the eight for the ages. Um, even though we've seen it before, just that we didn't see the ending. That's the only thing that matters. The ending, we didn't see the ending, you know, so we're going to get that at WrestleMania. That's the only thing I care about the ending and, and from the, from in the, in between the entrances, I'll care because they're going to do something spectacular. Plus Pyro's coming back. Thank God. But, but like in between, not the much, but like at the end, that's what I care about. We'll see how the end goes. Let's hope he doesn't do the freaking run. He runs one side, runs to the other, while his opponent is just standing there, like, like, like looking back and forth, like, oh shit, well, where does he go? Like he's Sonic. Like you can't see where he's going. He's so damn quick. He's back and forth, back and forth. No, 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 no. I hope he doesn't do that. Please. Please, go watch how he beat The Undertaker. Go watch how he beat Triple H at WrestleManias in the past. Ran one side to the other to the other spear. Uh-uh. I don't want that, Roman. Please, don't give me that. Anyways, right, he brings up that. And then Grand Angle said, look, it's unfortunate, but I got to say that Brock ain't here. You know, Brock Lesnar's not here. Look, uh... He, he Either he wasn't feeling well, or he had transportation issues, or he just didn't want to show up, but... It don't matter. Tonight, we're going to have a great show. We're going to have a Miz TV segment, and then the big dog decides to come through and said, well, well, well. I'm just going to paraphrase what he said. Uh, basically, what he said was, well, well, well. So, Brock Lesnar did not show up for work today. So, that proves that he doesn't respect me, doesn't respect the crowd, doesn't respect you. You see, if, if I or you, Kurt, or the crowd did not show up on time for their work, um, we would have been fired. But Brock Lesnar, he's Vince's boy. The irony. Now, I'm not going to be like everyone else, you know, be like, oh, my God, why would they? I'm just, I wasn't like... I wasn't like pro Roman, like yeah, Roman, yeah, fuck Brock Lesnar. No, 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 no. That wasn't my reaction. My reaction was, wow, they doing this. <laughs> they doing 
this for real. They're going all the way. They're going all the way with this guy. Okay. I like what he's saying. And, and I, I forgot to mention this last week or, you know, ever. Um, when it came to Roman Reigns' promo last week or two weeks ago when he came out and said what he said, you know, his voice... The bass in his voice doesn't fit right with what he said. If anyone else said it, yes, it would have been, it would have worked. But with him, the I I can I can believe him saying it. I can. It's just that his voice don't match with the words he's saying. The way how he's the way he's presenting and saying the words, it just doesn't come off right. You know what I mean? It, it just ah, that's just me. But yeah. Brock, Vince, Roman said uh, Brock is Vince's boy, which is very, it's just the, the irony in that, you know what I mean? So, Roman says he busts his ass each and every night. You said that two weeks ago, Roman. You saying you try to reiterate your shit again. Um, yeah, and then he says, you know, I, you know, I just walked past Vince McMahon, but he didn't say anything to me, you know. I'm here busting my ass for him, but yet, he decides to do this shit, you know. I would not be disrespected by Vince McMahon, you know. It's wanted to be to be it's wanted to be disrespected by Brock, but I would not be disrespected by Vince McMahon. Said Roman Reigns, he drops the mic or give it to Kurt Angle, and then he marches back. I'm like, oh, okay, that's it. No, no music playing. That just a serious segment. He's just gonna walk back, and then the camera kept following him. I'm like, oh, they doing this. They doing this. They go with the gorilla, and then the and then Roman goes face to face with yeah, Vince McMahon, yeah, and it's like, what? They doing this. They going all the way. They doing it all. They doing it big. When it's WrestleMania season, they doing it. Big, you know, and then yeah, Vince is like, all right, all right. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Let's uh, let's go to my office. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. You know, you know, Roman's upset. Got the face to face. He got face to face with Vince, and and then Vince. <laughs> if you want to take it in, I did very quick. Vince McMahon literally just stood still like a statue, and then be like, cut the commercial. <laughs> cut the commercial. He said he did that so quick. It's like fab. Trying to make this so real. Oh, come on. And then, uh, at least I knew what segment was coming up next. A women's segment because the, the, the Absolution group were right there in the gorilla position. So, <laughs> plain and simple. Come back from break. We see Renee Young outside of uh, McMahon's office. And, you know, Ray, Renee Young said that things got pretty loud at first, but then... But not completely out of hand, out of hand, and things have been quiet down. Reigns came out, didn't say a word. Vince came out and he says, "Look, Brock does have some special perks in his contract. You know, he didn't say those. I'm just, I'm just paraphrasing what he said. Um, Brock Lesnar is not his boy, uh, Vince McMahon's boy. He's not Paul Heyman's boy. He's no one's boy. He's a man. He's his own man. You know, Vince says he has no intentions of disrespecting Reigns, and he thinks he's a great competitor." You know, he he see he he events uh, reminded Reigns of the Rock's catchphrase, "Know your role and shut your mouth." Wow, to hear Vince McMahon say, "Know your role and shut your mouth" is funny as hell. I I gotta say that 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 is just funny. Okay, so then Vince said, "Yeah, he has certain privileges, and he'll get that to a minute." And then he in the end he says that. You know, he guarantees Brock will be at Raw next week. And he also guarantees that Brock will compete at WrestleMania 34 in the main event against Roman Reigns. And he gives his word that, yeah, like I said, Brock will be here next week. And regarding all the talk of disrespect, based on what Reigns just did, Roman Reigns is temporarily suspended. So... Okay, so... Uh, here's what I think is going to happen. Roman Reigns is going to show up next week on Raw. And he's going to beat up Brock Lesnar. He's going to get face-to-face -face with Brock. If Brock is going to show up next week, then the big dog's going to show up. He's going to come through the crowd and do what it do. That I guarantee you that. Bet money, all right? So, we come back from that. Sonya 
Sasha Banks take on Sonya Deville. The only thing that was important of this segment of this match was Bailey. For I know, I know, right? Bailey, someone we've been shitting out on this on on this channel for a long time. Bailey was the important part of this match. You got to look at Bailey, and she. When, I even noticed when she came out, Bailey was like, "Why am I even here? Like this, this is not even about me. This is about Sasha Banks. It's always been about Sasha Banks. Why am I even here, fam?" Why am I here? Like someone explained that to that. That's what I read off Bailey, and she's kind of, she was kind of annoyed in, in a way. If if not, then I don't know something else. But it's something along those lines. And then Banks got the win, and then the second Banks got the win, Bailey's like, "All right, fine, you won. Simple, leave." It's it's like how I feel when if if I'm being forced to go to church, right? Even though I don't I don't like going to church, I just don't. All right, but yeah. When I'm being when I'm being forced to go to church, right? The second the whole thing is done, I'm out. I'm gone. That's exactly what Bailey did. The second Banks won her match, she left without even looking back. And then, well, what happened? Absolution's like, oh shit, no, no, no. Yo, Paige is like, yo, 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 Mandy, yo, Devell, look, Bailey's gone. Banks is all alone. Go handle that. And then, pretty much it. So after that, we have Kid Rock be inducted to the Hall of Fame. Yes, I'm going to fuck some holes and going to rock this place. Kid Rock is in the Hall of Fame. I am not going to get into the discussion about, oh, this guy or this girl should be in the Hall of Fame. I, I came to the conclusion that, look, it's the Hall of Fame. They're going to get in it eventually. It don't matter how or when. It just, they don't, it's going to happen. Just give it time. Just give it time. Okay? Besides the Hall of Fame, nobody really cares that much anyway. You know, nobody talks about the Hall of Fame until WrestleMania season. Alright? Nobody talks about the Hall of Fame after WrestleMania for a, for a whole calendar year. So, th that's my thoughts on that. Anyways. So, after that, we have the Miz TV segment. Miz is in the ring, blah, 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 bragging about elevating careers and introducing Rollins and Balor. They both come out. Miz trying to stir some shit, but Rollins... Uh, says, nah, it's not going to work. And then Balor said the same thing. It's like, bro, you try to coexist with him against me, and I try to do the same shit with me against him. That ain't working, fam. Stop it. Stop it, miss. You know? And then Rollins is like, look, fam, at WrestleMania, Balor, you ain't got no sh no chance. No chance. I'm going to beat Miz and win that title. You ain't got no chance. And the battle's like, oh, really? The last time I fought you for a championship, I won. So what you trying to say, Rollins? You know? Rollins like, look, fam, I'm not in the past. I'm all about the future. And then, well, nothing much there. And then, you know, Rollins basically said, look, at WrestleMania, I'm going to stomp your head in, win the championship. Plain and simple. And then Balor was like, oh, oh, at WrestleMania, you're going to stomp my head in. Four weeks. Forget about four weeks. What about now? Let's do this now. And then the fans got crazy. I'm like, uh oh. And then Miz standing there like, oh shit, yes, yes. They're gonna fight it out, and I'm gonna look like a boss. I'm gonna look awesome. I'm gonna stand here, and no one's gonna hit me. Yeah. And then what happened? Rollins and Battle was like, hold up. Uh, you're in this match too. So why why are you sitting there like? You're watching two people fighting, and you have nothing to do with it. You're about to get your ass whooped. <laughs> you know, Miz trying to run, but in the end, got caught. Got his ass whooped overall. And then Rollins was the one standing tall overall over everyone. You know, Miz got tossed over the top rope by Balor, I think. And then Balor got shot in the face by Rollins. After that, we had the Bar versus the Mr. Raj. I kind of skipped, but then I went back. I went back because I'm like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Everybody, every tag team came out beating up the Bar, saying, you think you are the Bar? You, you think you're the best? You're talking all this shit on Twitter? Beat him up, beat him up, beat him up. And then they're all rolling, and then they played the the, the, the raw music, the bumper music out of nowhere. It's like, it, was, it was just funny to me. Um, After that, we had John Cena. I think this was the best segment of the night. Um, like the Roman segment, that was like second best. Second, if it's not second best or third best of the night.
But yeah, this was second best. This is the best shit of the night, honestly. John Cena coming out, talking about he's finally found his path to WrestleMania. I'm like, okay, he's, he's good. I'm thinking, okay, now he's going to challenge the Undertaker. Now he's going to get this over with and blah, 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 and whatever, right? No. He goes on and on and on about WrestleMania. So it's his dream and everyone else's dream to be at WrestleMania. So he said, fuck it. I'm going to be with the fans at WrestleMania. I'm going to be joining the crowd. I'm going to be a fan at WrestleMania like everyone. He goes to the crowd. I kind of skipped ahead because I got tired. And then he came in and he did his old Let's Go Cena, Cena Sucks chant. He started the chant himself. And then he's like, hold up. Hold up. If I do what I'm not supposed to do, then they would have cut my microphone off, sent me to the back, and probably suspend me like Robert Reigns. So, ah, whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I'm going to WrestleMania. <laughs> Fuck it. Yo, I challenge The Undertaker at WrestleMania. And then the crowd pops. And then Cena's like standing there like, okay, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to challenge The Undertaker at WrestleMania. And then the crowd pops again, change, yes, yes, yes. And then, then he's tapping the microphone, and he's saying, microphone's still on, I'm still here, nobody taking me out, what's good? <laughs> and he's like, well, it's obvious, it's not the, the people in the back, it's not the WWE higher-ups that wants to, that, not, that does not want this match to happen. It's not the fans, obviously. Only one man, The Undertaker. And then Cena got serious. I have to read what he what, what he said. I swear to God. He's like, look. Cena, Cena addressed Taker's ego. To get over your ego. Okay? The difference between me and you is that when I get my ass kicked and whenever I fail, I get back up, smile, and I beat up, and I, and I kick ass the next day. When you fail, you go and put your head in the dirt and you don't. Do nothing. You hide for a long time in your hole. Right? That's what Cena said. I'm like, oh, shit. He really doing this. He's like, he calls the Undertaker fragile. And he tells him to get over his ego. And says he's not a washed up. And he's not broken down. Because if he was broken down, he wouldn't be posting workout videos on his wife's Instagram. Damn. Undertaker sit down and then well he called Taker a self-centered egomaniac I'm like I I can't I can't accept this as a heel turn it feels like it it don't sound like it though because he's calling out the Undertaker he's punking out the Undertaker but he's not he he I don't, I, I, it's, I, ah, I'm confused. I, I don't know, right? And he's like, look, let me try feeding your ego. Hey, fans, do you want to see The Undertaker beat my ass at WrestleMania? The crowd pops, obviously. Do you want to see The Undertaker get me a tombstone at WrestleMania? Right? And then, and then Tina's like, well, so do I. And then he says, well, look, I can either go to WrestleMania as a, as a fan or I could go as your opponent, which will be historic. It is time to see if the dead man is still alive as the ball is in his court. Cena knows Cena says he knows what to what would he what would he Cena knows what he wants he would want if he were here in Undertaker's position. He would want one more match. Drops the mic, leaves. Best segment of the night. Despite the fact that he kind of wasted a little bit too much time and running around and playing with the crowd, after that, everything was lit. I loved that segment. Jesus Christ. Mm, too good. Too good. So, the bar is complaining up to Kurt Angle about what happened, getting their ass kicked, you know, talking shit on social media, backfired, and they got their ass kicked by the whole tag division. And they're hoping that, you know, that the rumors are true of another superstar shakeup. I am one of them. I hope that happens so we get a superstar shakeup because I. Ah, we need to change shit up on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live. Please, let's hope that this other superstar shakeup. Will finally put SmackDown back where it needs to be. SmackDown is fucking trash. It needs to be back to the promised land where it used to be over a year ago. Just saying. Anyways, 
you know, the 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 bar was talking about, oh, we could face the Bludger Brothers, which I love. Mm. Mm, that sounded good. Uh, the Usos again, or the Us, the the, the the yeah, the Usos, the the New Day, you know, all these tag teams on SmackDown Live. Even Breezango didn't even said that, you know. And then Cardano said, "Look, I'm not training you. No way, no chance. We'll find your opponent uh, tonight. You when they win the battle royale. Simple. And then after that, we have Elias in the ring. He's talking, and I, I just skipped it because I didn't really care at this point. And then Braun Strowman." You know, he said that he's going to find his way to WrestleMania. He's not going to be a John Cena wait and beg for somebody to uh, come through to show him his path. He's going to make a path of his own. And then someone that he, he guarantees that someone's going to get these hands in New Orleans. Then we have the best match of the night. Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor. I love when these guys are going at it. And Balor got the win. So Balor got revenge after losing to Seth Rollins on the Raw when Rollins bought, brought back the curb stomp. Nice. Nice, Balor got the win, able to counter the superplex into the Falcon Arrow uh, double maneuver uh, by Seth Rollins and got the W. And Balor was literally chilling in the ring, smiling his ass off while Rollins is frustrated that he lost and got caught by the leader of the Balor Club. So they show respect to Fabulous Moolah, right? Fabulous Moolah got shown some respect uh, with the Battle Royale. They're going to have a WrestleMania for the women. Um... Nice, I guess. I mean, I, if it's if that's what they want to do, that's that's what they want to do. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna say anything bad about it. It's like, well, the, I mean, unless they add a number one contenders match to this uh, battle royale, just like the Andre the Giant Memorial battle royale, what's the point of it? I don't care about matches that have no meaning or at least something. Why do you think I always? Make matches with number one contenderships on the line in my universe mode. Because I don't like having normal matches with no meaning. Damn. Like when you're trying to when you're trying to start a feud or start something new, you have to have you have to grab people's attention day one. And that's what they're failing to do with these Battle Royale matches. Uh, uh, is the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale going to happen still? Is that still a tradition here at WrestleMania? Are they going to put the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale on the pre-show? And then do the, the Mae Young on the main show? Or reverse? Well, what's it going to be? We'll find out at WrestleMania. Let's hope it's the first one I said. Because I'm pretty sure that's what they're going to do anyway. You know? Or they'll both be on the pre-show. Which is blessed. Because we don't give a fuck anyway. Anyways. The only thing I, the, the two things I had to skip, or the one thing I skipped, was the uh, the uh, the video package of Ronda and Kurt, Stephanie, and Triple H. They really showed this yesterday, and they're showing it again tonight. I don't know why. Too stupid. I hate it. So, Charlie Caruso in the ring, about to, about to have an interview with Oscar, but then Alexa Bliss. This segment, f I swear to God, I wanted to f jump through my TV screen and have gum and put it in Alexa Bliss's hair to shut her up. Like, seriously, this segment sucked, okay? I wanted to hear what Asuka had to say. Basically, Alexa Bliss is making fun of Asuka because she can't speak English properly like how we are, like how everyone else and uh, people, how normal people would talk, right? So, she's just bragging on about her winning the championship and being the first woman to win the elimination chamber match, blah, 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 blah. You know, even though Oscar, like she's just making fun of Oscar saying that, Oh, Oscar picked the easy champion, even though it's survivor series, you tapped out to Charlotte. And then two months ago, you tapped out to Oscar on raw. What garbage are you speaking of? Wh what are you talking about? Bliss? Alexa Bliss is really trash. She's reaching trash level here on Monday Night Raw and WWE. I'm sorry. That's facts. I'm not digging Alexa Bliss being champion right now. And I haven't been for the past five, six months now. So, yeah. Gotta go. So, Alexa Bliss tried to bring out Nia Jax. No one comes. She didn't come. So, we got Mickey James. Awful, awful way to go into a match. Mickey James is assault. Uh, Oscar, then here Michael Cole at the last very second before commercial break hits. Oscar versus Mickey, and then match happens. 
Didn't really care about the match. Asuka gets the win, as she always would. Blah, 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 blah. And then she goes up to Nia backstage, saying, where were you? You know, Nia's like, look, Kurt said to stay back. I got a match to prepare for. And then, you know, Bliss is like, look, you got to redeem yourself after what happened last week. Blah, blah, blah. Saying, I love you. I love you. I love you. And then she leaves, shows her support, saying she wants Nia to be in her corner next week. I think it's Asuka. And Nia said yes. And then Nia took on Joan King, who looks scared as fuck, which I don't blame you. And then later on, you know, Nia Jax, you know, she beat her up. And then she's about to leave. And then Bliss and Mickey talking shit. Mickey James talking. <sighs> okay. I'm going to say this loud and clear before I, you know, explode. Again, I ask what is the point? Of Alexa Bliss and Mickey James being together on Monday Night Raw. Hmm? Biscuit butt. Hmm? Achieving her dream to become a seven time champion. What did Mickey James do for her to be with Alexa Bliss again? Did Mickey James literally just walk up to Bliss and say, Hey Bliss, I'm a failure! Huh? I'm a failure. This run has been a failure since I've came back to WWE over a year ago. You brought me back. So, can I be with you again? I'm sorry for calling you Biscuit, but I'm sorry for trying to take away your championship. I'm sorry for disrespecting you and, you know, beating you up, dropping you with the Mickey DDT on while wearing fucking high heels. I'm sorry. So, can we be girls again? Girls forever, right? Is that what happened? What the f happened for them to be together again? Can someone explain that to me? I don't have to be a smart mark or whatever the fuck it is called on the internet to figure out what was the point of Alexa Bliss and Mickey James being together again. <sighs> okay, so, so Alexa Bliss. Hello, Alexa Bliss and Mickey James talking shit about Night Jacks. There was a microphone, which I come I'm surprised you didn't see. The camera was still on. And then, you know, Alexa Bliss said this quote, I'll never forget this quote. She's dumb as she is big. We doing this now. We doing this now. Okay. And then Nia Jax was like, you fucking bitch. That was her facial expression. You fucking bitch. And then she went off and chased... Well, they left already, but by the time she got to the locker room, she tore shit up. She ripped over... She ripped open a goddamn uh, suitcase. She ripped open a suitcase with her hands. Damn. Whew. Anyways. Um, but, yeah. Pretty much, and then she just screams, and she cries a little bit, and that's it. So if I'm Alexa Bliss, I don't have Oscar to worry about. I got this freight train known as Nia Jax on my ass, so. <laughs> no. No. So after this, we have a preview of the Ultimate Deletion, and then after that, we have, they just bring up stuff for next week on Raw. And then we had the Battle Royale, which I mentioned at the beginning of this review, where, yeah. Braun Strowman won the Battle Royale. Holy shit. So that's Monday Night Raw. Raw was a good show. Gotta give it to them. Better show than before. <laughs> I can tell you that. You know what I mean? I liked a lot of things tonight. I liked the, the, uh, the Roman segment. The Cena segment was the best segment. I liked the Nia Jax getting pissed off and ripping suitcases. <laughs> I like that. Um, I love the battle royale and Braun Strowman just winning the entire thing. That is awesome. And the best match of the night, Rollins and Balor, of course. So, what do you guys think of Fun and Not Raw? Leave your comments down below if you made it this far. Leave a like on this video. Check out Open and I did upload Monday Night Raw Universe mode. Check that out. Link is in the card in this video. Check it out. Thank you guys for watching. And I'm out. Good night. Later. We some southern boys with the promised strength. Ain't nobody man enough to feel the pain.